anyone who's just joining, I'm Rebecca from Artfully Walls, and I'm going to talk about decorating with art and give you some tips and tricks. So I'll start a little. I'll start by telling you a little bit about me, and of course, give you an overview of what we do at Artfully Walls. But um, first, I want to thank Ivy for hosting us and all of you for joining. So for those of you who don't know Ivy, Ivy is a new community and business management tool built specifically for the needs of interior designers, which I think is most of you. Um, another quick note before I get started, I'll be answering questions at the end of the presentation. So if you have any, I think there's a specific question button somewhere down below where you can ask if you have any trouble finding it. Um, I think the moderator will point you in the right direction. So. A little bit about me. Um, I'm not an art connoisseur or an art history uh, professional or anything like that. I actually come from a design background, um, specifically design writing and editing. I was the home editor at Vogue and was with the magazine for five years covering home and lifestyle. So I was styling photo shoots, I was writing um, a column on design news and sourcing props, um, everything from textiles and furniture to flowers and art. And that's actually how I became connected with Artfully Walls originally. And now I am working closely with their team as an advisor and we do things together like styling catalog shoots, um, partnerships, things like this, and lots of fun stuff. So I'll tell you a bit about Artfully Walls. Um, we are a highly curated online art destination. We launched about four years ago. And I say this word highly curated not because it sounds fancy or something like that. It's really just an important part of who we are. We work with more than 260 artists from around the world. And we focus a lot of attention on selecting specific works from each artist that we feel are really going to work for our audience and for our clients. Um, Quality is another really important part of who we are. All of the prints are museum quality, printed on premium paper. Manufacturing is all local in the US. We also have some um, manufacturing capabilities in Europe. Uh, we're a major art supplier for anthropology, which has been really cool. We started that about two years ago. And um, every season we work with them on new concepts and um, supply wall art for their offerings. Uh, we also work with a ton of interior designers, which has been really fun for us as well. And many, many designers make use of our wall designer tool, which I'll talk a bit more about later. And they um, have found us really useful for uh, sourcing art for clients. Um, we also love to tap into the design industry for ideas. So we offer special curated collections of art put together by leaders in the industry. And we actually just launched a curated collection with the Ivy founders, Alex and Lee, yesterday. So make sure to check it out. I think Ivy, um, if you follow them on Instagram, you might have seen that today. It looks really great. Alex and Lee have great taste, as we all know. Um, so why am I talking to you today? I, I know that for many people, art can be the most personal part of the home. So for all of you, as interior designers, that makes choosing art for clients really tough sometimes because it can be such a personal process. You have to figure out your client's taste and how much art they need, how much art they can actually afford, and which pieces are going to work well in the home. And on top of that, a lot of art out there is super intimidating, can be super intimidating and overly expensive. And, and it doesn't always have to be that way. One of the ways we like to think about art is in this uh, style of a gallery wall, which for anyone who doesn't know, is sort of this, um, this style of hanging art in groupings that follow a similar theme, whether it's color or subject or style. And for us, it's a simple way to make a big impact with art. And I know in the past few years, it's been featured in pretty much every design publication as a trend but we don't think it's a trend and I'm gonna show you why. As you can see here, art has been shown in curated groupings like this for centuries. Um, here we have images from the 17th and 18th centuries from the Louvre, uh, the Vatican and the Kuskovo estate in Russia. 
Here are some more examples in the US. We see um, Thomas Jefferson's Monticello estate in Virginia. There's some very presidential looking gallery wall choices. Um, this French painting, Le Salon, in 1874, it's fancy looking ladies with a very ornate uh, gold gallery wall frames. Um, British architect Sir John Soane's home, in, uh, he was really known for his neoclassical style, as you can see from the art here, and this jazz age interior from the 1920s. And I think it's really interesting to see all of these examples, particularly the 1920s example, because you can see the, the style starting to change. Even though it's all art in these shown in these groupings, it's becoming a bit more modern. Um, and here's an example of a gallery wall that we put together with art from Artfully Walls. And we used a mix of rich colors, portraits, and still lifes to invoke this sort of decadent neoclassical style. And, you know, so if you're dealing with a client who maybe has really expensive taste, but not the budget to keep up with it in terms of art, I think this is a really good solution for creating this sort of elegant, um, elevated, sophisticated look. Um, yeah, and so these the portraits are really strong here, which I think is nice. Of course, gallery walls aren't just for royals and museums and presidents. Um, you can see here in, fashion, in Diana Vreeland's fashionable home in the 1970s. She was actually the former editor-in-chief of Vogue. I really love this picture on the left. I love... I don't know if it's wallpaper or fabric. I guess it's fabric on the wall covering. And I love the way she hangs art on top of that. Um, and of course, I love the way the sofa matches the wall covering, but that's something else. Um, and then here, equally fashionable, Yves Saint Laurent's apartment. And you can see the style is, again, becoming a bit more modern. Um, and this photo on the right from Julia Leach's home is pretty much what you see all over Pinterest today. Um, Julie Leach was actually the creative director of Kate Spade, and then she launched her own line. She lives out in California, and this is her Venice Beach home, and it feels very Venice Beach. The style of the frames and the prints, it's kind of all very laid back and um, has a very lived-in look. Um, so as you can see from all these examples, the gallery wall is really something that's timeless and has evolved over time. So when it comes to building a gallery wall for a client, we like to recommend focusing on the idea of curating a collection. So, you know, try to help your client identify their style so that they're able to add pieces that they love over time and make it a bit personal and mix in pieces from the past with newer prints and maybe some originals. Um, you know, it can really be this sort of collaborative process if you have a client who's into that. If um, You know, see if... When you're starting out, maybe ask them if there are personal items that they want to add in, like a, a framed postcard or um, a kid's drawing, things like that. So you can really just start noticing what they like, maybe work with Pinterest or, you know, and other, there are a bunch of online art sites that you can suggest to look through and see if they're more into maybe abstract painting or geometric prints fine art photography, maybe they like a specific um, color palette or style or medium. All of these examples just show a big mix. Some of them are Artfully Walls prints, some of them are originals, some of them are just personal items. I think this might even be a real framed um, plant. Um, I think it's just really beautiful to see all the pieces come together, like, you know, there could be five pieces that when they were created had nothing to do with each other. And then to see them all working together on a wall is really cool. So another thing to determine early on is palette and spacing. When you're building a gallery wall, it's really all about scale, balance, and composition, but you also have to keep in mind style and mood. So, you know, if you're looking for, you have to kind of decide if you're looking for cool colors or warm colors. Um, on the left, it's an example of the cool colors, obviously, with some blues and blacks and grays. This is actually Michelle Williams from Lonnie Domino. Um, we work a lot with her, actually. She runs our blog, Artful Review. Um, and on the right, it's this uh, more of a warm vibe. It warm, warms up the room. 
um, with reds. And this print, I don't know if you can see my mouse, but if you see on the left, this kind of like swirly calligraphy like print, it's one of my favorite artists, actually. I think I just love the way her pieces look in a room. Her name's Elliot Paquette. And she does this kind of calligraphy style painting. Reminds me of Bernard Maisner. He's a calligrapher, if anybody knows of him. Um, and actually, Elliot's husband is Hugo Guinness. If anybody knows his work as well. He, if you've ever been to uh, John Darien's store on the Lower East Side, he sells a ton of Hugo Guinness prints. Um, Hugo Guinness also does a lot of Wes Anderson sets, but that's um, another point. Um, there are also, you know, you also can decide if you want to use bright colors or neutral colors. On the left, obviously, this is the bright example. I actually styled this shoot for Artfully with their art. We worked with an interior designer in her home and we brought in this art. It was just pieces that I liked the colors and I thought they looked nicely together. Um, and on the right, it's more of a neutral classic vibe. Um, okay, another side note. If you're ever staging a house for a shoot or if you're having one of your projects uh, shot by a magazine, I love working with artichokes as props. I think they're super photogenic, so even more than lemons. So um, keep that in mind as a styling tip as well. You can see the artichokes on the left. Um, it's also important to use consistent vertical and horizontal spacing. So sometimes this is all about trial and error. But we often recommend people to leave between two to three inches space vertically and three to five inches horizontally. That's just um, something that we saw that works. You can use it as a starting point and, and kind of figure out um, on your own what works in the space. As I touched upon before also, don't be afraid to mix styles and mediums. I think this is one of the, the most fun things about building a gallery wall is seeing how all the styles come together. And this print of the statue is actually one of my favorites from Artfully. It's this Ukrainian artist who's known for his abstract photography. And I just think it's really fun. And a lot of times art is thought to be super serious. And I love the way this kind of makes you laugh. Um, so there are a ton of styles on our site and like every week we find that things we never thought to put together actually work together really nicely. Um, these two photos are just examples of mixing some styles. I know a lot of the photos I've shown you here also show this. Um, but on the left, we have a photo from, um, an anthropology catalog actually, where they used our art and you see this kind of, um, painting on the left that has a lot of texture with these um, simple black and white illustrations on the right. And then the photo on the right introduces the idea of framing textiles, which I think is super cool. And I've seen it a lot lately. Um, here they framed these kind of um, woven wall hangings. I think it's, it's a really interesting look and it kind of takes the idea of hanging uh, tapestries from dorm room to more sophisticated by just hanging it like floating in a frame. Um, I've also seen a lot of framed Suzani's, which looks beautiful. Um, mud cloth, African mud cloth, um, indigo prints, um, even sometimes children's clothing, like to save, you know, a client's daughter's first birthday dress in a frame could be cool, things like that. So, you know, it's basically it's it's okay to mix in things that are a bit more 3D with um, also 2D prints. So, you know, if you're trying to mix styles and mediums and you're lost, we have come up with a really helpful gallery wall formula, we call it. Um, of course, this is just a suggestion, but we found that it consistently works beautifully and I thought I'd share it with you guys. So you can start with a portrait, a, a person or an animal, like on the left, lovely lady in red, and add one photograph, one oil or acrylic, one graphic or geometric print, 
and throwing in a landscape never hurts so uh, that's always an option and you can tie in the piece you can tie the pieces together with a common color palette so here you see we did uh, this kind of like moody reds and blues uh, color palette and it works really nicely together and we have the photograph in the top the abstract the graphic prints on the right the oil and landscape on the bottom and the lady in red and here's another example. It doesn't strictly follow the formula, but it's like I said, it's just really a good starting point and you can always play around with it. Um, this example is actually on the left is actually from the J. Crew store in Manhattan, one of the J. Crew stores. Um, we kind of just noticed that we love the way they hang art in the store and we noticed that they sort of use the same formula as, as we do. Um, so on the right, I'm showing you kind of how to get this look and just go over it briefly. So you've got this cloud photo on the left, a more abstract washed out piece on the top, um, an oil still life painting on the right, the photography of a woman, portrait woman on the bottom, something more graphic and another photograph. And as you can see, it just creates this balance that like you don't really know why it feels right. It just does. Uh, so some tips for placement. I think a lot of times people are intimidated by large scale art pieces and you don't have to be. Um, you know, they can create a focal point in the room and set the tone of the room and make a really big impact. And here actually we have two examples of large scale prints that are both waves. That was just a coincidence, but I actually think that um, it's a perfect example of how large art pieces don't have to be overwhelming in a room. The waves kind of has, have this calming effect. Like I could look at this piano photo all day. Um, and then of course we have our favorite smelly sculpture guy in the bottom over the fireplace that creates a really nice and quirky focal point over there anchored by these two smaller prints. And this photo in the top right is another one that I styled for Art Philly Walls. And I love also the way, I also love the look of um, placing smaller prints or smaller art pieces on shelves, like inside bookcases. So you can see that here as well. Um, another point is height. So we get asked this a lot about what height to hang um, art. And there's a general rule of thumb that says to hang art so that its midpoint is between 57 and 60 inches from the floor. This is because 57 inches represents the standard at um, human eye height. It's also regularly used as a standard in galleries and museums. So it's nice, but not everybody wants their house to look like a gallery or a museum. So depending on your client's style, don't be afraid to play with heights. Both of these examples I really love and they kind of show how um, filling a wall top to bottom, no matter the room height, can be can really extend a room ceiling and make the space look loftier than it is. I really love that look. Even sometimes, you know, depending on whether there are pets, children, whatever, um, I love the look also of like leaning art against the wall on the floor. So use all the space. I think don't be afraid to play around with it. Also, when it comes to balance, um, there's not really one right way to do it. In general, when hanging a gallery wall, it's been said that better balance is found when larger or heavier pieces are hung on the left, and not in the center or the right, um, like in the example on the left. But again, you can use your own configuration depending on your client's style. I think actually, so in the, in the example on the right, the more colorful prints, um, you know, the subject matter of the prints is kind of quirky and fun. And I think that the configuration follows suit. So, you know, use your own configuration to complement the design theme in a room or that maybe the subject matter of the art. And I think it's fun. Um, one of our favorite places for art is above the bed, actually. I think visually it can act like a stand-in for a really interesting headboard in a way. It can add interest also to a, you know, a basic headboard um, and create a calming vibe in the room depending on what, which kind of art pieces you choose. 
both of these examples are actually from the anthropology catalog as well with our art. Um, and I think it looks great. And both are, it's interesting, both are black and white art pieces, um, which has been a trend that we've been seeing. And I'll talk about that in just a minute. So, you know, I've been talking a lot about how the gallery wall is timeless, but there are, of course, a lot of trends that come and go that influence both art and design. And I just want to talk about a few of the trends that we've been seeing and show some examples. I love this photo of this black and white gallery wall. Um, I think it's just really classic, but also quirky. And they use, you know, the full height of the room. We can't see the ceiling, but it gives that um, idea. So the first trend is inspired by David Hockney. Um, if you live in New York, or even if you don't, you might know that David Hockney had a big retrospective at the Metropolitan Museum of Art this winter, just wrapped up about a month ago. And we noticed an increased interest in this style of art that features these sort of stylized landscapes and pool paintings. And I really love this look. Like I don't have a pool house or a beach house, but I it makes me want one. And it makes me want to put these, these sort of art pieces in my house anyways. Um, on the top right, this is a Tokyo-based artist named Hiro, Hiroyuki Izutsu. Um, don't ask me to spell that. And Joanne Ho from is uh, another artist that's featured here on the bottom right. She uses this really amazing, like, saturated palette of pinks and greens and blues for all these pool photos, pool paintings, sorry. And um, also Marie Freudenberger from New York is on the bottom left, this photo of the railing that leads into the pool. Her work is a bit more subdued, but it just makes you want to jump in also. Uh, the next trend is decorating with black. This is nothing new. I mean, black and white has always been uh, really like classic in decorating. And I think it's always had the ability to make a room look sophisticated and classic. And we've just been seeing more people use this color scheme for the walls, whether it's wallpaper or art or tile. Um, I also think gold frames are a really beautiful accent to an all black and white gallery wall. So you see here, we used, this is all Artfully Walls art, and we used a few um, gold frames, like this gold, these two with the gold beading, I think looks really nice with black and white. Um, the third trend is geometric abstraction. So for anyone who follows Pantone's color of the year predictions, um, this year they also predicted design trends for 2018. And the number one trend on the list was geometric pattern. So that's kind of what we're showing here. And, you know, you can give your clients an alternative to geometric tile or wallpaper by working with geometric wall art like this. Um, you know, it's not as permanent, but it still achieves a modern artsy look. Uh, so one of the things we offer on Artfully Walls' site are pre-configured gallery wall ideas that you can order as is. Um, our team puts together groupings of art that we think work well together, and we organize them by room and by style so that's easier for you to get ideas. So these are just some suggestions, and I'll talk about um, ideas by room. So this is um, an idea for a kid's room. Um, you know, there's a lot of kids specific art out there which is great we actually just launched our own um, collection curated specifically for kids and nurseries but um you know we also have a lot of art that's kid friendly but not kid specific like these ex like these pieces here and i think this is great because it can grow up with the child and it can go from the kids room to the teenage room to the dorm room maybe and you know and then back to the house again so you don't it doesn't have to be like specifically baby or specifically little boy or girl it can be something that's just a bit more playful that can be moved around throughout the years and throughout the home um, for the bedroom like i mentioned earlier we love art in the bedroom and this grouping is meant to be super zen which is the vibe that i love in the bedroom but not not everybody loves that. I just love this look of blues and grays together. I think it creates a really calming vibe that's great for the bedroom. Um, and this is 
an idea for the home office. I love black and white for the office because it's classic. It's not so distracting, um, but it's still stylish and welcoming. If you have meetings at your home office, it's not polarizing in any way. No one's going to walk in and be like, oh, I hate that art choice, you know? So um, this is a good solution for clients who have a home office. Um, and all of the pre-configured gallery walls that we offer, like the ones I just showed, come with hanging instructions. And we do this basically to help save time and make it really simple to take the idea from online to real life. And you know, you can do this for your clients. We can do this for you, for your clients. Um, I just think it really saves a step of like, you know, everyone can scroll through Pinterest and see a million great ideas and, and then realize like, how am I ever gonna do this? actually so this is kind of this kind of helps take the idea from um, computer to actual home um, another thing that helps do this is the wall designer tool which i mentioned earlier the wall this tool was designed by us to allow you to play with styles paint colors framing and matting options and see everything to scale so this Sofa and lamp are always here so that you can, and with the measurements so that you can see the scale of the paintings in relation. Um, they're also real paint. You can alter the wall colors using real paint colors from Benjamin Moore and Sherwin Williams. And you know, if your paint color isn't there, there's probably something that's close. So that's a really great um, feature as well. And interior designers have told us that they love using this and they love um, it helps with it helps to communicate with clients and saves time makes it easier for the client and you to visualize and and approve art selections and i think this whole concept of having art approved can take a really long time sometimes um, i actually interned for an interior designer many years ago and i remember when it would come time for art selections she would order catalogs from Philips and from Sotheby's and from all these auction houses, thick, chunky catalogs and, and tab pages and send them to the client and have them sent back or print out papers and send them over and notes. On, and it was just all really clunky and unnecessary. And I think that the more you can simplify the process of presenting art choices to your client and presenting like the full picture and how it's going to look in the room, the easier it will be for you to get the pieces approved and to move forward. So if the wall, if the wall designer can help, great. If you have another solution, that's also great. Um, I'll talk a bit about framing and matting as well. Um, when it comes to framing, natural white and black frames are timeless and they go with nearly every decor style. And I think this is great because um, you can move art around in the house. So if you order a piece for a client with the living room in mind and it gets there and you're like, oh, um, this actually doesn't work. I want it to go in the bathroom. You don't have to worry about the gold frame not matching the silver hardware in the bathroom. You know, you can just m easily move things about the house. So um, that's its one tip. I also always think that pairing white frames with simple nature photography and landscapes comes across super serene. Like if you look at this picture on the left, um, there's this photo that kind of looks like blue water waves with a white frame. And I just love the way that looks. I think it's really nice for the bedroom. Um, this photo on the left is also something that I styled for Artfully Walls. You can see it's my favorite blue and gray color palette. Um, so, you know, there are a lot of contemporary frame options out there and like white frames, like this one here, matte black frames, they're all great because they don't really distract from the art, which depending on what the art piece is, is, is helpful. Um, but we, there's also a lot of ornate frame options with gold accents and beading and, um, metallic and wood together. So I would say a large ornate frame like this gold, like this first option, the gold leaf wood, would complement a more traditional painting, something like one of the richly colored still lifes we were looking at earlier. And some of the sleeker, more modern options like this red wood 
or the matte black um, would look better with something like an abstract print or something more geometric, maybe even with text. Um, lastly, I would say that the frame doesn't have to be the exact size of the piece. I think this is some this is a mistake that a lot of people make, a lot of designers, a lot of um, just regular people decorating their homes. I think um, if you're dealing with a small piece of art, don't be afraid to use a larger frame and leave a bunch of white space around the image because this can really draw the eye in and create an interesting focal point in a room. Um, when it comes to matting, so if for anyone who doesn't know, the mat is this white space here between the frame and the actual art piece. So when it comes to matting, the mat, the purpose of the mat is to create a visual, visual space for the artwork to breathe. So always think about what the art is, if it needs to breathe, if it doesn't need to breathe, and then decide if it needs a mat or not. Um, for smaller art, a mat can increase the overall size of the piece and add a bit extra oomph. And a white mat also helps make a boldly colored piece pop. You can really see the color stand out when it has some space. Um, photographs tend to look great with mats, just pretty consistently. Um, and prints with text or something a bit more abstract look great without a mat and or just with a simple frame. In the end, of course, it's just up to you and use your eye. And of course, you can play around with this in the wall designer. You can add the mat, take away the mat, and just on the spot does that decide what looks better. Um, lastly, I want to talk about the, I, I mentioned we work a lot with interior designers. So we have this Artfully Walls trade program um, so that it makes working together mutually beneficial. And we offer exclusive pricing and resources for interior design professionals and architects. This includes 15% off all purchases, access to the online tools like the wall designer, special discounts for volume orders, and customized gallery walls based on budget and style. And this is interesting because um, a lot of people, you know, you can email us and say, listen, I have a client who loves cats. I'm just, I'm saying that because there's a cat uh, print right here you see above the lemons okay she loves cats and she wants a, a full wall of 10 cat prints we can help you put that together and um, not even if it's not cats you know we 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 know our library and we can help you source things and um we build relationships that way so um thank you so much for listening and thank you again to ivy for making this happen I'd love to take some questions, so I'm going to go ahead and look at the Q&A section now. Um, trying to find the Q&A. Okay. Here we are. Can you tell us some terrific online art sites? Sure. Um, I, of course, Artfully Walls is a great resource. Um, if you're looking for something a bit more expensive and high end, Artsy is a really great resource. You can actually, there's, there, um, a lot of really high-end famous galleries have their art selections on Artsy and you can go on and even purchase uh, art directly through there. And it's really um, a comprehensive look at what's out there, contemporary art, um, it's really great. Also, um, honestly, I love to discover art on Instagram. You can start following different galleries that are local to you, art fairs. Um, I, I think most of the art, major art fairs have, um, have Instagram accounts, even directors of galleries. You can get a lot of cool ideas from, uh, from Instagram. Uh, another question. What were the measurements again for spacing between pictures for vertical and horizontal installation? Um, so we recommend vertically about two to three inches and horizontally three to five. I noticed 
Okay, another question, sorry. Um, I noticed you have beautiful white walls decorated. Any recommendations for brick walls? Um, so for brick, I've, I've personally never tried to hang anything on brick, but I think actually it's an option in the wall designer. You can play around and see how it looks. Um, because there's already, because you're already working with the brick texture, I would say probably to keep it a bit um, simpler in terms of the subject of the art, maybe a bit something that the, a lot of the abstract or geometric options would look cool against a brick wall, or maybe depending on where you are, like a city, a cityscape, something that feels a bit more urban. Um, another question, let's see. Is there such a thing as too much when creating a gallery wall? I think that it just, again, it depends on your client's style. Um, some people are collector types that have a lot of tchotchkes and things all over the place in their house. And this person probably likes a full wall of art. There are other people who maybe are less interested in art or who like a um, a more of a clean modern look and something like five art pieces together might be too much for them so you know you can for a client like who who likes a bit more of a reserved artistic style you can suggest maybe two art prints side by side something that looks nice together um next question Can you upload your own pictures to the wall styler and enter the sizes? I don't think that this is an option at the moment, but um, I will check with the team who specifically works on this tool and I can let you know. Um, here's another question. Can we send you a color palette, fabrics, et cetera? Um, I'm not sure what you mean. You can send us that, sure, but what, what are you looking for, Micheline? If you're asking if we can match art to fabrics and palette, yeah, I think that's something that would fall under the category of this like customized um, relationship that we have with interior designers. Any other questions? Okay, so if there are no other questions, I'm gonna sign off. Thank you guys so much for listening and thank you Ivy.